But we're joined now by Zafar Benkash, crescenthyphenonline.org. Are you there, sir? Hello, Phil. Yes, I am. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you're batting clean up today because we have big problems we have to understand. There's, no problem. <laughs> we thought there was going to be a meeting in is, uh, Geneva, but it seems to be stalled. That's right, yes. Uh, yes. And one, uh, I, saw, I saw an article by, I think it's Finney and Cunningham, yes. where he says the problem is America and the Saudis can't get their act together because when they come on stage, it's going to be clear that they are allies of ISIS. That is correct. In fact, uh, both the Saudis and the Americans uh, have been pushing to include two terrorist groups. Uh, they go by the name of Jaish al-Islam and Ahrar al-Sham. Uh, both are part of uh, ISIS and al-Qaeda-linked groups. And uh, they have, of course, been involved in a lot of horrible things. Uh, Jaish al-Islam, for instance, was responsible for the uh, Hotha uh, chemical attack back in August of 2013, mm -hmm. which was essentially meant to provoke the U.S. into attacking Syria because Barack Obama had declared the use of chemical weapons by the Syrian government as a red line. But when these terrorists used it, of course, you know, he didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. But although he was about to go to war against Syria, but then uh, the British uh, intelligence notified the Americans that their analysis showed that the chemical composition of those uh, chemicals that was used was not the kind that the Syrian army possesses, mm -hmm. and that these are weapons that were supplied to these terrorists by the Saudis and the Turks. And so that's the kind of group that the Americans and the Saudis now want to include in the Geneva talks. Mm -hmm. uh, which, according to the, the U.N. representative for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, he said that these have been postponed until Friday, although it is difficult to know whether they actually would be held on Friday. And he even said that uh, while we are still working on what groups to include uh, in these talks, mm -hmm. uh, the talks are not going to be direct. They will be indirect talks in the sense that uh, one set of people, which presumably is the Syrian government's representatives sitting in one room, and the opposition uh, mm -hmm. groups, whatever groups uh, are allowed to participate, would be sitting in another room, and mediators would be going back and forth between them. Mm -hmm. So that's the scenario that, uh, uh, that stands at the present time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, this is, as you said at, in your intro, uh, that the Americans and the Saudis are pushing for terrorist groups to be included uh, in the negotiations, and that clearly exposes uh, their, their ultimate links and who is behind uh, these terrorists that have caused so much mayhem, killings, and all kinds of other terrible things in Syria over the past five years. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I mean, it, it, we really, you know, the last time we spoke to you, uh, and you were pointing out there are serious cracks Showing and and particularly with Saudi Arabia, uh, they can't. They are having trouble using this expression. Well known, it they can't get their act together. They they stumbled in a big problem in Iraq recently, where their emissary there, their, their ambassador, uh, identified the uh, people's uh, militia, uh, part of the government forces of Iraq, as being uh, ethnically or sectarian lined, and. And the, it was so shocking that a, an Iraq complained. And then the leader, the, uh, the Saudi, uh, Saudi foreign Saudi minister, minister, if that's what he called him, yes. he said, uh, oh, the man was, uh, that's not our position. Yes. So <laughs> I, I thought people had to resign when those things happened. You know? Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Saudi Arabia is digging itself into a deeper and deeper hole. You know, I'm sure you've heard the expression that when you are in a hole, stop if you digging. want to get out of it, the first thing to do is to stop digging. <laughs> but but I, I guess the Saudis don't know that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they don't do manual labor, you know. That's correct. That's, <laughs> but so that, that, uh, this, clearly they are going to be – they're a damaged party going to these talks. Uh, 
what, what, there's another group, though. I want to make sure we understand who they are because the Turkish government is very upset that I, I believe that Russia and Syria uh, said they were okay with a group called the YPG participating. Yes. Now, who is the YPG and why does Turkey object? Yes. Now, the YPG is a Kurdish group, uh, which basically is uh, an abbreviation for Yakinian uh, Parastina Gail, which in Kurdish is translated into People's Defense Unit. So it's a Kurdish militia that is uh, tied to the Kurdish Supreme Committee. It's an armed militia, and uh, it has been uh, operating in the northeast of Syria, uh, where uh, this particular group obviously has fought against these uh, ISIS terrorists and uh, liberated uh, considerable territory from their control. But what Erdogan's problem is that he does not want this uh, Kurdish group that is based in Syria to link up with the Kurds in Turkey. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, it's Erdogan who is really has gone out uh, on a very uh, extreme position uh, against the Kurds. In fact, he targeted them deliberately last year in Turkey and even tore the agreement that he had, peace agreement that he had signed with them back in 2012 in order to arouse Turkish nationalism. And of course, he was somewhat successful in the sense that he won a majority in the parliamentary election. Yeah, he runs for office by opposing Kurds, right? That is correct. So He's the one who's going to f- crush the Kurds. That's right. So he, first of all, he was the one who had signed a peace agreement with them in 2012, which was, of course, applauded by a lot of people. People saw that as a very sensible approach. And even the Kurds uh, were very happy with it because they felt that at long last there was a government that was willing to sit down and talk rather than shoot. But then uh, Erdogan decided that he was not going to have that, so he tore up the agreement and started shooting and created a lot of chaos uh, in Turkey itself. Uh, But, of course, by appealing to the jingoistic feelings of the Turks, uh, he won the elections, but I don't think that uh, he would get away with this because this is going to cause uh, a lot of problems for Turkey uh, in the medium and long term. And so Erdogan's uh, real problem is that he does not want the YPG to be represented in the Geneva talks because, number one, it would not only grant this Kurdish group recognition, but it it will also enhance their status among the Kurds. And so more and more Kurds would then turn to the YPG, and also uh, it would enhance the stature of uh, the Kurds in Turkey, particularly the PKK, which is the mm-hmm. Kurdistan Workers' Party. And so uh, Erdogan sees that as a threat to Turkish sovereignty as well as his own rule in Turkey. Mm-hmm. And it also undermines his position of trying to uh, destabilize the Syrian government because uh, of late the Syrian army has been making good progress against these terrorist groups. Mm-hmm. And so Uh, If YPG were represented in the Geneva talks, then that would be a further blow to Erdogan's policies uh, in Syria. Mm -hmm. Uh, Further to that, uh, there are three or four prominent well-known names who uh, have led the Kurdish community or known abroad, like Mr. Barzani and, and I forget the other family's name, but... Uh, Talibani and so yeah, on. Mr. Yes. Talibani. Do they comment on this, on this situation? Well, they haven't because they are um, uh, quite comfortably um, established in Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, so they have not really openly said anything about it. But, I mean, from the Kurdish point of view, uh, the inclusion of uh, YPG cannot be a bad thing uh, because, uh, obviously, the Kurds have historically... Uh, struggled uh, not only for their linguistic and uh, political rights, but they've also been struggling to establish uh, an independent Kurdish state. Mm -hmm. And that obviously is going to affect a whole lot of countries, including Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Syria, and parts of Armenia. Uh, 
mm-hmm. which would essentially uh, redraw the borders of these countries, and it would be a major destabilizing uh, fact mm-hmm. uh, or factor if it were to materialize. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, uh, although in Iraq the Kurds have achieved de facto independence, uh, in the other places, uh, currently, of course, in Turkey, they are fighting against uh, Turkish forces. In Syria, they have got uh, fairly a broad uh, degree of uh, autonomy because the Syrian army is unable to reach there. And in any case, the Syrian army is engaged in so many other areas that it has left the Kurdish region to uh, the YPG as well as the uh, Kurdish Supreme Committee and also aligned with the Democratic Union Party, which is another Kurdish party. Mm-hmm. So the Syrian government is happy for these uh, groups to um, keep the terrorist groups away uh, from certain areas of uh, mm-hmm. Syria uh, so that the Syrian army can concentrate elsewhere. You would, you would recall uh, Kobani, which was... Um, uh, there was fighting taking place in 2014 between the terrorist groups, the ISIS groups, as well as the Kurds. And uh, from there, they were uh, they, the Kurds were ultimately able to drive away the terrorists. And so the, the group that was involved in fighting was the YPG that mm-hmm. fought against the, the terrorists, drove them out of there. And then, of course, last June, they also took another major uh, town called Tal Abyad from uh, the ISL, ISIS terrorists. Mm-hmm. Uh, in June of 2015. Yeah. Now, by the way, uh, just apropos of Canada and its involvement, uh, I, I remember interviewing Scott Taylor and yourself about this point that Canada, when it goes to Iraq, tends to be involved mainly in the Kurdish areas, doesn't it? Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> that's right. And that's, that's uh, problematic. Yes, and <laughs> curious. Uh, because, you see, the thing is that uh, right up to now, despite the fact that um, Prime Minister Trudeau had said that uh, Canada was going to, uh, you know, withdraw from the bombing mission in Iraq, but it has not. It's still continuing, and there is it's still uncertain whether he's going to fulfill that promise. But at the same time, he has sent uh, trainers to Iraq, to the Kurdish region, there are, I believe, at the present time, about 60 or 70 uh, military trainers that are training these various uh, groups, etc. And so, um, unfortunately, uh, Canada is involved uh, in the area, and it is not really uh, very helpful to the to the overall situation over there. Yeah, uh, they, maybe they should say their Iraq Kurdish policy rather than Iraq it would help us understand what they're up to. Yes. Uh, Zafar Bengash, crescent-online.org. Dot, dot net, sorry. Dot net. Yes. Dot <laughs> net. Uh, wonderful site. And I thank Thanks. you very much for joining us. It's my great pleasure, Phil. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Ascended Quran, realigning man to the divine power culture. The first ever tafsir written directly in English by one of the best Quran scholars in North America, Imam Muhammad al Ten volumes of this multi-volume tafsir are now available from Crescent International at a special price of $40 per volume, including shipping anywhere in North America. The noble messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is revered and loved by all Muslims but there is one aspect of his blessed life that is not well known and that is the treaties he entered into as well as the letters he wrote to kings and rulers of neighboring countries. For the first time this book, Power Manifestations of the Sirah, examining the letters and treaties of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam discusses this crucial topic in detail. The book is now available at a special price of $30 including shipping and handling anywhere in North America. Order from Crescent International, P.O. Box 747, Gormley, Ontario, L0H1G0, or call us, 905-887-8913. Order your copy today.